It's Court Philippe Chatrier. Centre Court, Roland Garros, Paris, June 5, 1999. The French Open Women's Singles Final. Perhaps the most dramatic, controversial match in the history of this classic clay court Grand Slam tournament. Given the French flair for drama and the glamour of Paris and Roland Garros, that's a big statement. With famous wins by locals René Lacoste and Henri Cochet a hundred years ago, Bjorn Borg's run in the 70s and 80s, and this century's incredible dominance by Rafael Nadal, you might think the most memorable final would be a five-set men's thriller. But on a rain-delayed, windy Saturday in 1999, Steffi Graf and Martina Hingis managed to squeeze enough drama, confrontation, tears and tantrums into three sets to make this women's singles final the most unforgettable head-to-head -head showdown. It would be Steffi Graf's last of 22 Grand Slam singles victories, but the irony, even tragedy in a sporting sense, is that it also effectively ended Teen Queen Hingis's reign at the top of the women's game. Not that anybody could possibly have predicted that at the time. Hingis was still only 18 when she stepped onto the court that day against Graf, who was only a week away from her 30th birthday. But it was the youngster, already dubbed the Swiss Miss, who was the raging favorite. The youngest ever Grand Slam singles champion, winning the 1997 Australian Open at just 16 years and 117 days. She had added Wimbledon and the US Open, plus two more Australian Opens to make five Grand Slams. On her way to this final, she had not dropped a set and had only conceded five games to Arantxa Sanchez Vicario in a brutally one-sided semi-final. Whereas Graf had faced a tougher path, dropping sets to Lindsay Davenport and Monica Sellers in her quarter and semi-finals. After rain had delayed the start of the final, Hingis handled the blustery conditions better than Graf and took the first set and then promptly broke the German serve in the opening game of the second set. 6-4, two love up. What could possibly go wrong? She was just 18. If the crowd of 15,000 Steffi Graf devotees on center court at Roland Garros had taken Martina Hingis's youth into account as she unraveled in the 1999 French Open final, it could all have been very different. Trouble was, the Swiss Miss had already earned a reputation for some brattish arrogance. So when she needed some forgiveness, she didn't have many credits in the bank. At 17, already reigning Australian and Wimbledon champion, she said this before the final of the US Open. Well, of course, you kind of feel you just beat everyone in the world. You're the best in what you do. So that's the best feeling you can have out there with knowing no one is better than you are. And the money is not bad, of course, either. <laughs> you just go out there in the shop. If you like something, you can buy it. <laughs> that was also the year she had complained about an early match time, saying she wasn't a morning person. I'm number one in the world, so I should have the right, if I'm going to play on centre court, to say what time I want to play. When it was suggested she was so young to be so arrogant, she said, I'm number one in the world. I have a right to be arrogant. On its own, this youthful confidence wasn't so bad. But she had also made a series of remarks which made her unpopular with many of her peers in the locker room. She described French star Amélie Moresmo as half a man. She asked Lindsay Davenport during a coin toss, do you want me to serve or break you? She terminated her doubles partnership with Jana Novotna by declaring, she's old and slow. She did have a friendship with one of her doubles partners, Anna Kornikova, describing the duo as Spice Girls. But that also ended badly. And when she was once questioned about a rivalry with Kornikova, she replied, what rivalry?
I win all the matches. But perhaps her biggest mistake was to insult the enormously popular Steffi Graf. In a tennis magazine in 1998, she said of the German great, it's a faster, more athletic game. She is old now. Her time has passed. So when the pair meet in the French Open final, Graf not only has the crowd support as the underdog, but a steely determination to show the upstart that she still has plenty to learn. The body language of Graf, hand on hip at the flashpoint of their encounter, shouts disapproval. Hingis is pointing to a mark on the red clay of Roland Garros that she believes will convince the umpire to overturn a lineswoman's call against her. But here's the thing. She has crossed the net to Graf's side, and that's against both the spirit and the laws of the game. Even more importantly, there's no need for her to do it. She's 6-4, two love up, and seemingly cruising to victory. But as she argues the unwinnable argument, calling for the tournament referees in an angry tirade, she loses the crowd. The teenager is booed, whistled, ridiculed, even verbally abused by a crowd more one-sided than any Davis Cup or Fed Cup match. With the whole stadium against her, it's almost like workplace bullying. Her errors are cheered. The crowd chants Steffi, Steffi during game breaks. And as the veteran grows in confidence and claws her way back, Hingis's game and mind crumble. She is just 18. Graf breaks back, breaks Hingis' serve a second time to win the set 7-5, and is not above using her own gamesmanship, revving up the crowd by leading a Mexican wave while her opponent is off court for a toilet break. Hingis returns in a new outfit, but not a new outlook. It has been three years since Graf has won a Grand Slam title, and she smells blood ripping the Swiss teenager's ragged game apart as Hingis argues with lineswomen and the crowd jeers louder. Down 5-2 and match point, Hingis makes a last desperate, unsporting bid. She serves underarm. It works, but the crowd hates it and jeers even louder. Soon, another match point. She serves underarm again, but this time it doesn't work and Hingis complains to the umpire the crowd was too noisy and pleads for a replay. Again, the umpire and Hingis argue at length, and this time, Graf gets involved. What are we doing? She asks with contempt. Are we playing tennis or just talking a little bit? We play tennis, okay? Still, the noise levels rise and soar to a crescendo as Graf celebrates her comeback, 4-6, 7-5-6-2. The end of the match is not even close to the end of the drama. But before that, let's pause on the triumph of Graf, who won her sixth French Open, her 22nd Grand Slam singles title, and was already preparing for a retirement that barely two months later, at just 30, would stun the sporting world. A dozen years earlier, Graf had been the Martina Hingis of tennis, without the arrogance and drama. A teenage Grand Slam winner, she had ended the era of tennis when Chris Evert and Martina Navratilova took turns as world number one. She did it with a quiet and modest off-court persona and a flowing all-court game which saw the German dubbed Fraulein Vorhand. Graf spent a record 377 weeks as world number one, and in 1988, became the only person to claim a Golden Slam, sweeping all four majors and the Olympic Games. Despite having a colorful and headline-grabbing father, Peter, Graf was enormously popular for her grounded and private nature. What was not known at the time of her victory over Hingis was that she was in the early stages of a courtship with one of the finalists who's to play for the men's title at Roland Garros a day later. Just as Graf had come back from nowhere to defeat Hingis, 
Andre Agassi pulled off a miraculous comeback against Ukrainian Andre Medvedev. Winning just three games in the first two sets, Agassi came out from a rain delay with a changed, aggressive attitude and won in five. The two against the odds victories strengthened a fledgling attraction Agassi and Greff had for each other. The American's marriage to actress Brooke Shields had just ended. The German's seven-year relationship with racing driver Michael Bartels was on the rocks. On a flight out of Paris to London to prepare for Wimbledon, Agassi made a 30th birthday card for Graf out of an airline menu. Both stars made their respective finals at Wimbledon 1999, but both lost. Less than a month later, Graf announced her early retirement. A month after that, she moved into Agassi's Las Vegas mansion. Martina Hingis learned from an early age how to win. But for the youngest Grand Slam winner and the youngest world number one, it came all too easy. The lesson she never learned was how to lose. As her game unraveled under the intense pressure of a biased crowd and a nerveless opponent in the French Open final of 1999, Martina Hingis forgot Grand Slam protocol, leaving the court without sticking around for the presentations. Beyond control, she slapped a WTA official and her mother and coach, Melanie Molitor, had to coax her out of the locker room and back onto the court, where she continued to sob uncontrollably. Only then did the crowd and her opponent cut her some slack. Graf telling her at the presentations that she was still young and there was no doubt that one day she would come back to win the French Open. But she never did. She would make four more Grand Slam singles finals, but lost each time. In the last of them in Australia, she led Jennifer Capriati by a set and four love, but could not convert four match points and lost in three sets. Although she won nine tournaments in 2000 and regained her world number one ranking, 2001 produced just three early wins before ankle surgery later in the year. In 2002, she won two early tournaments, but by May, she was back in surgery this time for the other ankle. At the age of 22, she retired. Hingis would make two comebacks. The first, in 2006, lasted two years and produced three tournament victories, rising as high as the world number six ranking. But it ended with a two-year ban after testing positive to traces of cocaine. Having served her suspension, she played world team tennis in the US before, at 32 in 2013, announcing a second tour comeback to focus on doubles. There, with Sanya Mirza and later Chan Hao Ching in women's doubles and Leander Pays and later Jamie Murray in mixed doubles, she became the number one doubles player in the world before retiring in 2017. Her overall record, 43 WTA singles titles, including five Grand Slams, 64 doubles titles, including 13 Grand Slams, and seven mixed doubles titles, all Grand Slams, adds up to an exceptional career worthy of the forgiveness which came her way with her induction into the International Tennis Hall of Fame. When I was a little girl, I didn't know there is a Hall of Fame. When I was at the top of my game, I did not know there, is, there was far more than sports. As, an, as I stand here now in front of you, I'm not sure if I deserve all this. So what can I say more? Thank you all, and I love you all. Thank you. Thanks for watching. For more great content on all the major stories in world sport, make sure you hit the subscribe button.